Right, uh, welcome back. So in the third part, uh, what we are planning to do is we will go through a few other chart types. Uh, for example, we will go through pie charts, radar charts, uh, single value charts, right? And uh, so that uh, we'll be able to cover most of the charts that are there in DHIS2. And um, what will be remaining after that is to discuss on some uh, advanced or new uh, features in the charts, such as uh, having uh, charts with multiple axes and of course the year over year charts. Right. So let us start with uh, the third session of the day. Let me share my screen. Right, okay. I'm going to open the data visualizer and I can select, let's uh, create a pie chart, okay? So if you can remember, we discussed in detail about when to use pie charts and you have to remember like uh, whatever the components that are there have to adapt to 100% for us to create a pie chart. So to do that, let me select uh, now uh, one important thing you have to see, uh, you have to notice when we select pie chart, you can see that uh, the two uh, uh, dimensions we can um, this define are series and filter, okay? So let me select uh, for the data. I will select uh, data elements and in the malaria, we have uh, cases positive, cases positive RPT. I will select this one, right? And I click on hide. In the organization unit, I will keep it as training land and the period, I will keep it last 12 months, right? Okay. Right. And also, let me add this to series, which is the age. And we have three age types, zero to four, uh, more than 15 and five to four, five to 14, and click on update, right? And this is what I get. So you can see now that we can only have one item in the series. And right now it's the disaggregation of positive cases. So if you can remember that now we have three items for the filter. So that means whatever the data that is coming into this visualization will be uh, from training land for the past 12 months for malaria cases positive from RBT. And that has been disaggregated and visualized based on the three categories, uh, which is re uh, represented under the series. Is that clear? So that's why we are seeing three of them. Okay. So basically series determines uh, which slices that formulate the pie chart. Okay, right. Let me just uh, try to swap uh, this one with uh, something else, like maybe, yeah, sorry, uh, period, and click on update, and this is what I see, okay? So here now you can see it's a very vivid uh, pie chart that, that uh, we are seeing, but obviously, uh, as we discussed in detail before, this is not the ideal kind of pie chart that you should have. Why? Because there are too many uh, items which, which we have, and it is, uh, I mean, most of these items are of same size. So we can see, I mean, only thing that we can, you know, perceive by um, looking at this is like, there are so many, um, uh, like there are months and most of the months are more or less similar. This is all what we can say, right? But there are of course clear winners, but it's very difficult to compare when you have so many items in the uh, series or as the slices, right? Okay. Any questions on pie charts? Uh, we have discussed in detail before. So uh, I just showed you what I mean, the, the key differences. So we have only one item in the series. We can uh, we don't have a category here. We can put whatever the uh, filter criteria under the field. Any questions? If not, we will move to the next chart, uh, chart type. Looks like there are no questions. 
let me share this fine all right so let us look at this uh, new chart type i mean it has been there for a while called radar chart right so what you see here we are seeing uh, uh, this radar chart for training land epi bcg coverage right so here in this uh, radar chart what we can see is we have uh, like the outer layer, outer circle in this radar, uh, which kind of represent all the months or the period dimension, right? And from the center to the outer radius, this is where it uh, it uh, demonstrate the intensity of the value. So you can see the uh, like it is from zero to hundred, right? So more closer the value is to zero you will see that the radius of the uh, line is lesser and you will see it around the zero. But here now it's more close to 100 and that's why you are seeing the values here closer to the 100, right? So in a way, in the radar chart, it kind of gives us these two dimensions that we can compare at a given time. So we have this outer uh, circle, which kind of uh, uh, separates the entire data into different categories. As you can see here, we have different months. And uh, from the center, how far closer to the outer circle um, signifies the, uh, the, the actual value of the data item uh, that is representing these lines, right? So all in all, it's a good chart to uh, visualize two values uh, and you can make a comparison. But the thing is, it's a bit of a complicated process, and this is not exactly something uh, a, a person can, you know, uh, define or person can uh, go into depth and say this is what is meant by this chart. Uh, I mean, just by looking at it. So it's a kind of a complicated chart, uh, and it becomes more complicated if, uh, especially like if you have values uh, which are very closer to each other. So I mean, ideally for this visualization, radar chart is not a great one. So for example, here. We can't see the slight uh, variations which are there in periable rural and uh, urban communities. Okay, and this is another example. Like here, of course, you have only two items: um, the uh, case is positive, and the positive is microscopy, which is much uh, easier to define compared to the previous one. Right, and if it is just one data item we try to visualize in the radar chart, it is much, much easier. So here, what we can easily do is we can now just by looking at it, what can you say? Like, uh, if, if I mean, let me ask this question from one of you, like, how can you interpret this chart that you are seeing here? What do you see? Anybody? right so in fact uh, what we can actually interpret is like just looking Hello? at it yeah yeah please. yes i uh, just want to say that um as we just only have one and um we may see that um in uh, april to june 2018 is where you have had a uh, uh, good uh, high number and uh, uh, comparing to the lowest number it was in um, uh, it was in uh, general to March I think this one. Yeah. 2016 so yeah that that's what I can say exactly so I mean like this is very easy to like this. Uh, for example, if there is a seasonal variation or like from uh, some variations based on the period dimension, you can easily uh, uh, demonstrate by using this kind of a chart. But we can do it because it is just one indicator that we are comparing. But it is, if it is too crowded, it may be relatively difficult. Okay. Now let's quickly try to draw one uh, radar chart. Right. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. Sometimes. Uh for some conditions like malaria mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we we need to compare different um, uh, periods uh, let me call them seasons because some analysis requires to consider some seasonal factors 
So using the previous uh, uh, slide you are presenting, can we compare like three years and uh, uh, each and every quarter is put on the same side so that we can see the output of the same season, like for malaria. I, I don't know if you understand what I mean. Yeah, yeah, I do understand what you're meaning. So it's it's like, if you can think, if you remember, like I mentioned, uh, uh, line chart is a very good way to compare the trends. But uh, if you try to convert this one to a line chart where you are comparing, uh, you know, quarterly data across three years, mm. what you still do is you will have one single x-axis and all the periods will be listed in that single x-axis, right? So mm. then, like if you want to compare whether January 2017 and January 2018 or maybe January 2017, 18 and 19, whether each of them were different, mm. it's a bit difficult uh, thing to compare because you are still looking at the same x-axis, maybe a different uh, point of time. So to do yeah. that, doing next something called year over year analysis where you are actually seeing a line over, I mean, like you will see multiple lines for the same time period across the years. So I will get back to it when I'm presenting that, which is a much, much easier way of comparing this uh, season variations uh, of data across the months. Yes. Right. Fine. Let us quickly draw one um, data chart. Uh, so I will just keep this uh, uh, malaria test positive, uh, just like that. I mean, the, only this one, and maybe I will just get rid of this one, and I will select radar. Okay. So here I have to have one in the series, and then again in the category dimension. So let me move period to categories so that I will see this entire circle, and I will move data to series. And I will click on update. And this is what I see. Okay. Now let's try to demonstrate. Uh, let's try to analyze what we are seeing here. So, for example, we are seeing all the months in this outer circle. Okay. So that means right now the periods are in category dimension. So that means uh, whatever you are seeing in this outer circle has to go to category dimension. And uh, the series is this line, right? So this uh, green color line, the data data dimension is represented by the series. And the data is uh, filtered from the training land. Um, for the entire training land, we have the data, okay? So in a nutshell, in a radar chart, what you have to do is you have to put uh, uh, under category, whatever we are having in this outer circle and the data, uh, or, or like whatever you want to see, uh, have in the uh, line here, one line or multiple lines, you can have it in series dimension, All right? Hope that is clear. Um, so what we can actually do is like, uh, if you want to show a very crowded radar chart, for example, we can select this uh, malaria age and try to add it to series. So as, as I told you before, whatever we add, add to series will appear as lines, right? So what I'm going to do is I will select one additional dimension called malaria uh, age and add it to this uh, here. Sorry, I will just put it here. Age comes here and I click on update. And then this is what I see, okay? So if I, uh, explain to you what I did here. The periods is clear, it's, it's all, uh, you know, uh, in the outer circle. And data is filtered to the training land. And I also filter all the malaria positive cases under the filter. So for the scope of this uh, visualization, we have all data from training land and the malaria cases positive, right? And that data we have disaggregated based on these three ages. And because it is in the series, all three options that are there in this uh, disaggregation will appear in each of the lines, right? So we have like the three age groups which are appearing here. Now, please note, uh, this is a kind of a trial. I mean, this somewhat involved trial and error as well. There is no harm trying to issue, I mean, like put uh, something, I mean, a, a wrong or inappropriate thing in any of these dimensions and try to update. 
you can't break DHS2 by doing that. You might sometimes even see errors. So if you see error, so for example, yeah, let's try to update it now. Right. Um, um, sometimes it gives a very specific error like this, series is empty, right? But it might change sometimes uh, uh, if the error is non-specific. So you just have to click uh, like this and then finally you will get a uh, uh, visualization and you can decide whether it is appropriate or not. All right. Any questions on radar chart? If not, I think uh, we can move to the next chart, which is uh, gauge. So let me create a new visualization and I will select from the chart type gauge. Okay. And here, let me select uh, for the data. Data from uh, immunization or uh, OPV. Right, I will take oral polio three coverage, OPV three coverage, and hide it. And the category, uh, I will also take uh, last 12 months and the organization unit as training land. Right, and I click on update. So before I click on update, you have to uh, now you can uh, you can uh, see what happens here. We don't have a category uh, uh, to, to configure here, we just have the series. And whatever we put in the series will appear like this. You see? So it's just that one single value we are trying to display. So here you are seeing the value 72.5, which is coming from this data, which is oral or OPV3 coverage for training land for last 12 months. Right? So this is a nice way of uh, demonstrating a, a single value, uh, which is uh, kind of like, I mean, uh, we can just focus the end user's attention on one very important value. We can just uh, expand this further. So right now we have one random color here. What we can do is we can go to legend and click on display legend. And then uh, click here, select a single legend for entire visualization. And we can select one legend which has been predefined, right? So for example, we have one called EPI, EPI coverage. So I click and select that one and I click on update and you will see the background color um, of this visualization, the gauge chart is, is, uh, is getting changed. So here now we are seeing yellow color, right? So how this yellow color comes is because we have already configured in DHIS2 a legend which, which says like there is this, uh, I mean, between a particular range of values, you should apply this particular color, right? So that's exactly what we did by uh, going, uh, I mean, going to this legend and configuring which legend that uh, that should be uh, visualized here. Please, can you apply the baseline and the target line to see how it looks? Baseline and target lines. Okay, something interesting. Now, ideally, you can't. Okay, yeah, yeah. so uh, let's put uh, right target line. Of course, you want to put a number. Okay, let's uh, maybe. Okay, and we want a baseline, maybe 10. <clears throat> Update. So you see here, right? You are seeing just uh, just like a tick here, target and baseline. Good. Very nice, nice, nice. All right. I think uh, this is quite uh, simple to understand the gauge chart. So in the same pace, let's uh, move on to the next chart type. Any questions? I'm kind of rushing these uh, these few topics because uh, these are kind of simpler ones. Fine. Are there any questions? Major questions? All right. Okay. Fine. Let me move on to the next chart type, which is single value. Right. So I will click on single value. Sing. Um. Sorry. This one, and I click on update. Right. And let's see what happens. There you go, right? So previously we had the uh, uh, value 72.5 in the uh, gauge chart because basically gauge chart and single value chart just the same thing, right? So it's just that uh, uh, it's a number, single value that you are showing. 
And most important thing to know is like these values, I mean, so for example, the 72.5, it actually, uh, now the, 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 the text color of the single value chart is also having the same color uh, based on the legend that we applied, right? This is something that you see from two, uh, I mean, 2.35. So for example, if I just uh, deselect the display legend and it becomes just plain black color. But you, when you apply the legend, it becomes uh, the, the color of the text is becoming, uh, I mean, it's getting changed based on the legend that we have applied, okay? This is uh, in fact very useful, this, uh, uh, these kind of single value charts, especially when you want to you know, um, display uh, striking figures in dashboards. Say for example, COVID-19 deaths in the country, cumulative deaths or cumulative cases. These, for these, just the plain number really matters. And these are the, uh, I mean, so this is one common use cases uh, where, we, where use case where we are using single value charts. All right, I think, um, yeah. So we have covered most of the content area for the part three of today's session. So any questions up to this point? Right, if not, uh, like, uh, what's your preference? We can go and do the ungraded exercises or else if you're fine, maybe we will take um, five minutes break because this is a final break we are going to have today. Uh, if someone wants, we can take maybe, I don't know, five minutes break and uh, move on to the last or I mean the final uh, part of today's session uh, where we'll be discussing few advanced visualizations and um, configurations we can do in uh, data visualizer. But I think you can proceed and finish. Of course, uh, are there any objections? So if there are any objections, uh, please let us know in the chat. Okay, sorry, I, I was not focusing on chat. Uh, there are a couple, there is one question. Chintakas, what is the advantage of radar chart than a line chart? Why should we use radar chart instead of line charts? Right, um, good question. <laughs> Thing is, uh, so what happens is, uh, Chintaka, uh, you can't actually say one is superior, right? So basically, uh, thing is like radar chart, uh, I mean, it's the way you look at it, right? The radar chart, uh, if you are putting it in a dashboard, it consumes less uh, space because you, I mean, that particular line, that single line that you are seeing in a uh, plain line chart, you kind of, curl it so that uh, it's, it covers the entire 360 degrees. So in a small uh, screen area, you can, uh, you know, maybe put that uh, visualization that you, that usually occupies the entire screen width if you do it in a line chart. But other than that, uh, I don't see any major, major differences. Maybe like, uh, it's a good question. Anybody in the audience who have a better um, idea as to like when uh, some radar charts may be superior to line charts? In the meantime, if uh, anybody feels that we should take a maybe couple of minutes break, please let me know in the chat. If not, um, we can proceed. And uh, give me a couple of seconds to uh, display the word of the day. So you can take at least a couple of uh, seconds break.
Right. So the most awaited word of word of the day for today is this one. Right. Uh, something from the today's session itself. Right, uh, so let me stop the sharing. 